Um, so I want you guys to stand with me. We're just going to say a, a quick prayer, and then we're going to get right into the word for, uh, for, for today. So Father, we thank you, Lord, today for your word. We thank you that does not, it does not return void, but it always accomplishes what it's sent forth to accomplish in our hearts. So God, we, we ask that you do a work in our hearts with your word today. Encourage us, build us up, challenge us today. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. So yeah, so this is uh, the first Sunday of the new year. And uh, I'm just really excited. I feel like there's something that's about to shift in the spirit. I think that things are going to happen. Amen. Not just here at the crossroads, but I think for the body of Christ in general, I think God is just about to do something. How many know we're getting close to the end, right? We're closer to the end this year than we were last year, right? That's obvious. And so the closer we get to the end, the more that God, the Bible says that his glory is going to cover the earth, like the waters cover the earth, amen? And so even though we know from Scripture there's going to be tribulation, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be uprisings against the church, we understand, we see the, the makings of all that being prepared, but we also know that when, when the enemy rises up and comes against us, like a flood, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard. And so God is about to do something powerfully, and we get to be part of it, and it's really, really good. And so, talking about the new year, um, there's always a sense or feeling of new beginnings. I don't know about for you, but there's a sense, hey, it's a, it's a new year. There's a, there's a new beginning. I can start over again, in a sense. And, and, and January 1st becomes a marker time uh, to set new goals for your life, doesn't it? It's, uh, there's a sense that this year is going to be different. Uh, I get to start doing something differently. There's an excitement about overcoming something sometimes, or there's clarity for new goals, clarity for new ideas that begin to pop into mind. And I believe that this all revolves around one thing, that is the word new. How many know on December 31st, late in the evening, you start getting all these texts coming in right around the midnight time saying, Happy New Year's, right? And you hear it, and if you're watching TV, you're watching the news, or not the news, but you're watching, you know, maybe Times Square, and, you're seeing, and everyone's like, yeah, and it's like Happy New Year, right? And so you hear happy and you hear new together, right? And I think we hear it, and there's something that triggers at a subconscious level that, hey, this is a new beginning, right? And so all of a sudden, we have this passion or this energy inside of us uh, to set goals and visions for the next 264 days, all right? And I've never been one for New Year's resolutions. But I've always been one, it's kind of like, there's just like, hey, this is a fresh start. And, um, you know, I think that what happens is there's this thing where, where um, at a subconscious level, there's a desire that is stirred in us to recalibrate our lives. And the word recalibrate or calibrate is actually means to correlate the readings of an instrument with those of a standard in order to check the instrument's accuracy. And so when we hear the word new, we think, hey, it's a new day, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recalibrate my life okay, uh, with, with a standard in order to um, check my instrument's accuracy. Accuracy. And how many know we're all instruments in the hands of God? Amen. And that's not a negative thing. We're instruments uh, in our work in our workplace to make make a better world in the area that we have expertise in. We're we're instruments to raise our children. We're instruments in the kingdom of God to make the world a better place, bringing the king. How many know we're instruments? Okay. And so God has called us to be instruments in His kingdom. And here's the thing: it's really hard to set goals and visions in October. How many know what I'm talking about? or June or July, and you say, I'm going to set new goals for my life. Why? Because it's kind of like you're halfway through the year, okay, and you're not hearing the language of new beginnings. You're hearing the language of, it's like you're being handed a half-painted canvas. So imagine you're an artist and someone gives you a half-painted canvas, and you have all your paints, and you're like, I don't know where to go because it's already half-painted. How many know what I'm talking about? Okay, and, and, and you're not hearing the language of new beginnings, But at the end of the year, we begin to hear, it's a new year. It's a new day. You know, the calendar goes back to the beginning. You start all over again. You get your taxes all in order. You're getting rid of last year's financial stuff. And everything's new. And so there's a sense of awe that, hey, I'm going to make a different different future for myself in 2019. All right? And so the word new means never existing before or introduced or discovered recently for the first time. And that's what happens when we move into a new year. All right? Um, God wants us to have vision. God wants us to have vision for a new thing. 
You know that God wants to do a new thing? And in order to do a new thing, we need a blank slate. We need a blank canvas. He wants to give us a blank canvas so we can begin to paint the picture that God wants for your life. And we, sometimes we have to put away the old canvas and we have to start new because if we try to paint on the old canvas, we lose the, the, what, the creativity that God wants to give you for a new day. Does that make sense to anyone today? All right? God's giving us a blank canvas. Okay? But when we get that blank canvas... We have to have the language of new beginnings. And faith and vision is formed when we have that blank canvas and we hear the language of new, new beginnings. Now, here's the thing, okay? God wants us to correlate the readings of our lives with those of a standard in order to check our instrument's accuracy. That's what God wants us to do. So we begin to do that. We begin to calibrate according to a standard. So we say... Well, really, you know, my body mass index is a little bit, you know, the standard is, you know, you Google it, okay, uh, for my height, well, I should be weighing, so you know what, and it's a new day, so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set goals for my body, I'm going to take care of my body better, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to go to the gym, right? How many, how many hear what I'm saying? So you begin to calibrate based on a standard, and I hear from so many people, including myself, hey, I'm going to lose weight this year, I'm going to go to the gym this year, how many, how many know what I'm talking about? All right, And so we want to calibrate our physical appearance. We want to take care of ourselves. And, and here's the thing is, we need to also calibrate our spirit. We have to calibrate our mind. We have to calibrate our spiritual life. And that's what God is calling us to. 2019 is a year of new beginnings. And it says here in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19, we see that God uses the language of new beginnings constantly. How many see that? He's always talking about a new day. He's always talking about a new thing. He's always, because he wants us to constantly be calibrating our life to a standard, which is his son, Jesus Christ. So do not remember, here he says, God says, the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, but, but it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? So God wants to do a new thing. I will make a road in the wilderness, and I'll make rivers in the desert. And so here's the promise that God gives us. And if we're able to mix it with faith, if we're able to allow ourselves to have a blank canvas and say, God, I, I, I'm not going to consider the former things. I'm not going to live my life on, on the way things were before. I'm going to believe that you can do a new thing. And when you have that approach, God begins to do something in your life. It's called faith. Do you believe it today? All right. And so God is saying here very clearly, don't dwell on the past. Because when we, we dwell on the past, we, we don't have faith for the future. And if you want God to move in your life, you've got to do away with the things of the past. Now, I'll tell you this. When I was in school, I was told by my teachers, you're no good at math. And the reality was, I was no good at math. <laughs> I didn't like it, had no interest in it, but I let those words sink in, all right? This was the former things, and so I just began to believe it at a subconscious level, and any time there was a math test or a new thing, I, would, I wouldn't even apply myself. How many can hear what I'm saying? Because I was told that I'm not good at math, so I'd never applied myself, and so even with my two older kids, when they come for math homework and say, Daddy, can you help me? I'd just go, oh, go to your mother. I'm no good at math. And I wouldn't even, because I was told for so long that I'm no good at it, so now I'm not even applying myself because I'm considering the former things. Now, with my Jonas and Hannah, my two other kids, Jonas came to do uh, some math homework, and I said, go to mom. And mom says, I'm too busy. You guys don't help me enough around the house, so go to dad. <laughs> so now Jonas comes to dad. She's refusing to help him. So now I have to help him. So I sat down, and I started to really look at the, the math, and it bothered me, because I remember when I was his age, I struggled with this particular thing, and now they're doing it different. I don't know what it is. With Every other subject stays the same, but math, they keep changing it. You think you got it figured out, and then they go and change it for the next grade. How many know the different formulas and all that? Like, what is this? So I sat there, and I'm looking at the math, and me and my son are sitting there scratching our heads trying to figure it out. And suddenly it dawns on me as I'm going through the formulas and I'm thinking, oh, this is easy. Oh, this makes sense. And the next thing you know, I'm going through the math and I'm all excited. I'm doing his math homework. 
I mean, I was a good student. I used to hand it off to the guy next to me and pay him, right? You know, do my math. This, no, I'm kidding. But, but, but all of a sudden I realized, hey, I, I like math. But I was always told I was no good at it, so I thought, hey, I don't like math, so I'm going to do it. Now I actually like math, and I enjoy doing it. I'm sitting there, this is really fun. I'm doing the math with him. That doesn't mean, honey, that he, they, they need to still go to you sometimes. But, but the math thing, suddenly I realized, listen, I was told something that I believed for so long that I stopped trying. And you'll think about maybe I tried to overcome this in the past, and I couldn't do it. I have, I've always had this issue. I've always had a temper, and I'll always have a temper. I'll always have this issue, and I've tried this in the past. And you're considering. That means you're pondering and thinking about something in the past before you make a decision for the future. And God is telling us here, you can't remember the former things. Don't consider the things of old. For God says, I'm doing a new thing. Say a new thing. And I believe that in 2019, God has given you a blank slate so you can start again. You you have you can say, "Hey, listen, I know in the past I couldn't do it, but God promises me if I don't consider my failures of the past, He's going to come and do a new thing in my heart." And this is an awesome promise. Now, look what if you're willing to do that. Are you guys willing to put the past behind you? Let me see your hands. Okay, here's the promise: Behold, I'll do a new thing. It shall spring forth, and you will know it. You're going to like, hey, I know this thing just happened, okay? Look what he says. I will make a road in the wilderness, okay? So I want you to say with me, I won't dwell on the past, and then God will make a road in my wilderness. Now, what is a wilderness? A wilderness wilderness is a neglected and abandoned area of your life that is uncultivated. It's, it's, It's... uninhabitable and it's inhospitable and maybe you've been neglected by people maybe you've been abandoned in your life maybe there's areas that you've neglected maybe there's things you've abandoned and you haven't dealt with in your life the word of God promises that if you will not dwell on the past he will come and make a road through the midst of all this mess amen so God wants to make a road in your wilderness in 2019, this is the year that you can choose. Say, I'm going to believe what God's word says. Amen. I'm going to believe this scripture. I'm going to take this to heart. And if you can do that, I believe God, he's going to make a road for you to go through your mess. God himself will take care of your mess as you make your mind up to renew your mind. That's that simple. Okay? So how do you get through the mess? God makes a road. And sometimes life is like a wasteland. There's wasted things in your life. There's things that are, are just a mess inhospitable, things you've neglected, abandon your life, God is going to go right through that mess if you'll only believe his word. But sometimes our, our life becomes like a desert. How many know that sometimes it's a wilderness and sometimes it's a desert, right? What is a desert? A desert is a barren area or a landscape where there's little precipitation, okay? Maybe there's areas in your life if you think about your life, areas of your life where there seems, there seems to be barrenness. You're not bearing fruit at your job. You're not bearing fruit in your relationships. You're not, maybe you're physically barren. You can't have kids. Whatever it is, there's no, there's no fruit coming out of your life. Well, listen to what God says here, okay? He's going to cause us a river to come into your desert. How many believe it? So God wants to bring a river into my desert. Man, I get so excited about that. And what's my part? What do I have to do to get the river? I have to do one thing. Forget the things of the past. Don't dwell on the past. No, God is doing a new thing. And if I'm willing to do that, God will come and make a path through my wilderness. God will come and put a river in my desert. That's good news today. So God's coming to make a path in your wilderness in 2019. I want you to say that with me because I want you to believe it. Say, God is coming to make a pathway through my wilderness. God is coming today to bring a stream into my desert. All I have to do is forget the former things and stop considering the past because God is doing a new thing. This is good news. All right? Maybe you felt distant from the presence of God in 2018. Well, I've got news for you. He's doing a new thing. He's got your address. He's got your number. And all he's asking you to do is to believe him that in 2019, you're sitting there 
and you're about to paint, and he's dropping a brand new slate, blank slate, and he's saying, go for it. I'm doing a new thing. I'm going to use you in a new way. I'm going to, you, things that you thought you couldn't do before, you're going to do in 2019. You're going to begin to, in my will, you're going to begin to prosper. You're going to begin to do good things, and I'm going to bless you. All right? In 2019, we need to choose to believe this scripture. And when we do that, when we believe, we enter into the realm of faith. And faith unleashes the power of God's word. You know, this book has no power unless you have faith. Right? Faith is the key to unleash the power of God so that it becomes a, it can actually transform your life. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, we believe he's it, that he exists, but that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so as we seek him, as we read his word, as we study his ways, he's going to reward us. Amen? That's what faith is. And so God wants you blessed i got news for you. He wants you blessed. He wants you prosperous with a purpose to funnel the kingdom. And to, you know, there's, there's purpose and prosperity. He wants you to have great marriages, right? He wants you to win your neighbors. He wants, you, he wants people to look and say, man, you're blessed. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. And that's what God wants for you in 2019. All right? In Isaiah 43, 18, it says, Do not remember... The former things, nor consider the things of old. All right? And so we need to do, that's our part. Say, that's my part. So when the thoughts come, you say, I can't do this. I tried it before. I can't overcome it. It's always been, no, you say, no, 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 no. I'm not considering, that's my job. Say, that's my job. To cast down those thoughts. God's doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Some of you believe it. I can see it on your faces. He's doing a new thing. You know, the Bible, the Bible consists of Old and New Testament, or two different covenants. And when you go to Bible seminary or Bible school, you learn that. Within the Old Covenant, the Old Testament is the first half of the Bible. There's actually eight, there's seven covenants. There's the Edenic Covenant, which is the Garden of Eden. The Adamic Covenant. The Noah Covenant, that God made with Noah. Abrahamic Covenant. There's a Mosaic Covenant, which is Moses' Covenant. There's the Land Covenant, and there's the Davidic Covenant. So that's seven covenants, all based on different promises. A covenant is an agreement. But then there's the New or the Last Agreement, which is the New Testament. And how many know we're living in the New Testament? We're living in, 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 in a New Testament, a New Covenant based on better promises. And so we need to be people that... In 2019, learn who we are in Christ so that we can walk out the blessings of God in our life. All right? In 1 Corinthians, it says this, 11 verse 25. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Now we know that in the cup was wine, which symbolizes the blood of Jesus. Okay? Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. All right? And 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 says this. He enabled us, this being Paul speaking, to be ministers of this new covenant. This is the covenant not of written law, but of the Spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the Spirit gives life. Right? So the first seven covenants in the Old Testament, it brought death. Because people would try. They say, we're going to try to be good enough. We're going to try to follow the laws. We're going, to try, we're going to try to obey the best we can. But how many know that if you fail in one, you fail in all? And, and so, all, so they tried, and God loved them and worked with them and brought them into Abraham's bosom and all this theological stuff I can't talk to about right now. But God, God cared for them and took care of them. But, they, but at the end, they died. But in the New Testament... It brings life. Because the new covenant is about the entrance of the Holy Spirit into a temple made without hands. I want you to say with me, say, I am am. the temple of the Holy Spirit. So this is what the new covenant is all about. Jesus said, I've come. The blood has paid for the sins of all you people so that the, the Spirit of God now can come and live within you. And now it's all about relationship. 
It's all about walking in relationship with God. And that's what God is doing. It's not about the written letter anymore. It's about the spirit being transformed and being in connection with God. And so God wants us to learn how to read and translate his word in 2019. In the Old Testament, when Abel killed his brother, the Bible says his blood cried out for vengeance. But what did, what did Jesus' blood do? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, it says here, You have come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and the people, and to be sprinkled uh, with blood, which speaks of forgiveness, instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. And so the blood of Jesus says you're forgiven. Your sins have been washed away. So stop considering the former things. Stop thinking about the past and who you used to be because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen? Actually, that's my next scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is somewhat new. He's a new creature. Some things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Is that what it says? And so say, I'm a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. All things become new. And so what happens is in our mind, we consider, well, you know what? This is who I am. But God looks down and says, no, you're a new creature. You need to believe it. Stop considering the things of old. Walk into the newness of life that God has for you. Amen? God wants to give us a blank slate in 2019. But here's the thing. He doesn't want to just do it once a year. He wants to do it every day. Is that, that is the heart of God. God. God's mercy is new every morning. We read that in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. We'll bring it up. And 24. Because of the Lord's great love, we're not consumed. For his compassions, sometimes they fail. Is that what it says? They fail not. God's compassion does not fail. He's compassionate. Look at this. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. And so God wants to give you a new slate every morning. It's a shift in the way you think. You've got to get up every morning and say, God, this is a new day. I'm going to walk out what you have for me today. God is doing a new thing. All right? Remember in 2019, you can achieve the impossible. You know, you can do things that, no, that you, 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 know, you can't even imagine what you could do if you could just learn, and if I could just learn, to put away the things of the past and say, I believe in God that I can do great things. It's a new day. I've been given a blank slate. All right? You know, Tony Stark, if we get into the Marvel thing here for some of your younger listeners, right? Tony Stark... He's nothing but a billionaire. He has no power. He has no ability, right? He can't, he, can't, he can't stop crime. He can't do great things. But when he gets into that Iron Man suit, right, he, he becomes a superhero. And, and this is what we need to realize, that we have to choose every day to put Christ on daily. When we put on Christ, we, it's like we're putting on the armor of God, and we can, do, we, can do, we can fight against the wiles of the devil. We can overcome the things that are coming against us. Why? Because we are in Christ, Right? And we have to do that every single day. Say, every day day. I get a blank slate. And look what it says here. I'll give you one more scripture. Ephesians 4, 22 to 25. Paul says, throw off your old sinful nature and its former way of life. Stop thinking about it. Which is corrupted by lust and deception. Next verse. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Okay, who's going who's gonna to renew, renew your thoughts and your attitudes? The Spirit. You don't even have to work hard at it. You just, you know what I'm saying? You do your part, put off the former, and let the Holy Spirit begin to renew your thoughts. Look at this. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts of life. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So it's our responsibility. It's my responsibility. Every day, when I'm given a blank slate, to put on the armor of God and believe him for great things. Amen? Um, you know, 
God has given us, and there's a promise in Ezekiel eleven nineteen, which I don't have to read, um, that um, God has given us a new heart. I found, actually, I'm going to read it because we have the scripture there. God says, I'll give them singleness of heart, and I'll put a new spirit within them. And I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart. That's what happened when you became born again. God took out that hard, stubborn heart that was constantly kicking and constantly considering the past, constantly living the way we lived. All right, next verse. Was it, oh, that's the only verse I had. Okay, no problem. All right. But God is a God of new beginnings. Say, God is a God of new beginnings. God is a God of new mercies. And he gives newness of life forevermore. You know, um, I had some stats here, and I don't think I I wrote them down. And I'm going to give them to you next week. But um, let me see. Yeah, I, I, I forgot to write them down. But I want to give you some stats basically on the biblical illiteracy in North America right now. And, it's some, and I'll go over it next week a little more. But 40, I think it's 45% of Christians that attend church read their Bible. And this was statistics done uh, by Lifeway Statistics, I believe. I'll give you the details. But it was like 45 or 46% of people that attend church on a regular basis read their Bible more than once a week. 40% read their Bible once or twice a month. And the others don't even read their Bible. And they did some surveys and they found even in, they did a, a survey in Britain because Britain has pulled so far away from traditional Christianity. They did a survey there and they said that um, adults, when interviewed, didn't know the story of Adam and Eve. They didn't know it was in the Bible. They didn't know about um, Joan and the whale. And they actually thought that Superman was a story from the Bible. I'm serious. And that Narnia is from the Bible. Like, they have no idea. Um, and, and because we become so biblically... Illiterate. So one of the things for, for, for myself in, in 2019 that I really felt the Lord impressed upon my heart is to give tools to the church to get into the Word on a daily basis. So I, I'm ordering right now, I'm ordering, go through the Bible in a year, it's $3 for a little booklet. You keep it with your Bible. And uh, I, if I can see a lot of hands go up, I'll order, uh, order them for everybody. So who, who wants one, okay? Okay. So about 100 of them, okay? So we're going to order them, and you have it in your Bible. Now, you might want to use a different, you know, maybe you don't like this. Maybe you want to find your own, you know, go through the Bible in a year thing. That's fine, too. But the thing is, we need to be in the Word, amen? Uh, we need to be, I, I really feel God stirring us to be, be a church um, who we know the Word, because we're living in the last days, right? And how many know that people are falling away? The doctrine is, it, there's a falling away of doctrine. People don't no true doctrine anymore, and we're talking about hell doesn't exist anymore in some churches, and, you know, there's all kinds of mix-up and people believing about the Trinity and all this stuff, so we need to get back to the truth. How many hear what I'm saying? All right, so I saw a lot of hands go up. Now, the thing is, we, we, it, it's $3. That's not a big commitment if you want to pay for it. We're going to have them hopefully by next Sunday at the book table. If you want one, you can have one. If not, you can find your own, but this one I'd really encourage you to get. So, All right, so... Um, I don't want to go too, too much further today because we're going to get into more um, of this next week. But what I'd like to do is um, I'd like to ask the worship team to come up just to do a couple songs and just kind of worship God into the new year. And um, yeah, if anyone in this place, you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, our prayer team will be up here at the front. If you want to come up for prayer, you say, hey, I want to make a commitment. I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to have a relationship with God. Or you have any prayer needs, you're welcome to come forward. But uh, let's just sing a couple songs together and uh, welcome the Lord into 2019.